Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about doing a principal component analysis, or PCA, in R using presence absence data. Before we go through an example in R, let's briefly discuss what is a PCA. Simply put, a PCA generalizes information from large data sets and picks out the major trends and features of the data. Really, it's a cool way to visualize and understand complex data. PCAs are often used in ecology research. They can be used to compare different sampling sites, identify interactions among species, and show how different species traits correlate. We will be going through an ecology-based example in this tutorial, assessing the presence absence of different species of frogs across multiple sampling sites. But first, let's look at how a PCA uses our data. This is a simple generalization, but will be useful for understanding the PCA biplot later on. Let's start out with a plot with an x and y axis. Then we could put a bunch of different points on this plot. They can represent different species or traits. This plot should look familiar, like some sort of regression. When we're doing a PCA, we aren't particularly interested in how these different points relate to the x and y axes, but are interested in the relationships amongst the points themselves. We can draw a line through our points to explain where the most variation is, and call this line principal component 1, or PC1. It looks almost like a linear regression line, characterizing that this new axis is explaining a bulk of the variation in our points. We can draw another line that intersects and accounts for the second most variation in our points. Notice that the axis is offset perpendicular from PC1. We can call this PC2. Similarly, we can draw a bunch more axes of variation across our plot, but notice that PC1 and PC2 explain the most variation in our data. Since PCAs are trying to simplify and generalize our data, we are often most interested in PC1 and PC2. We can use these axes of variation to rethink our data and define relationships between points. In a new plot, PC1 and PC2 are our new axes, and we can generalize relationships between points from this. This explanation for how the axes are created will come in handy later on when we create our PCA biplot. We are now ready to look at an example in R. As usual, we need to load in the necessary libraries and set our working directory. In this case, the only library I need is vegan. Let's read in my data. My data is a presence absence matrix of different species of frogs at different sampling sites. The file is called inventory data as we are looking at species inventory. Note that after the name of the file, we write row.names equals one. This is because our data is a matrix. So the first column contains our row names, which are a bunch of different sampling sites. For each sampling site, we have the presence absence, denoted by a one or zero, of each species of frog. Our objective is to see how the presence of certain species relate to each other across different sites. Just as a precaution, we are going to NA omit our data frame, which removes any rows with missing values because this would lead to an error in our PCA. Finally, we can write the single line of code needed to actually run the PCA. I like to use the RDA function, standing for redundancy analysis, in the vegan package for this, rather than the printcomp function in base R, because I feel like the final biplot looks nicer and is easier to modify. RDA without adding in predictors is the same thing as a PCA, so it works to use the function like this. After writing the name of the data frame, we can set scale equal to true as the values in the matrix are standardized. Since we are using presence absence data, our data is binomial, so there's no additional steps necessary to standardize it. I'm going to name this function df PCA and run it. I can read the function and look at the principal components, but more importantly, I want to look at the summary information of this function. I am mostly interested in scrolling up to see the importance of each of my principal components, which indicates the proportion of variance explained for each. Think back to our summary before we began this example. The principal components are the axes of variation in our data. In this case, we have nine principal components, but are only interested in the first two. PC1 explains 30.12% of variation in our data, and PC2 explains 21.61% of variation. Below, we can look at our cumulative proportion explained which tells us that our first two principal components explain a total of 51.73% of variation in the data. This is important because the higher the variance explained, the more reliable the trends you can pick out from the biplot. In the summary section, you can also see the species scores and site scores that contribute to making the biplot itself. We can create a broken stick plot to quickly visualize the variance explained by each principal component. This will show us the inertia, or variance of species scores from the PCA output. This is different from how we were using the term variance before, which related to species presence. 
When we run the code for the broken stick plot, we can see the PC1 and PC2 have the greatest inertia, and this value decreases with increasing principal component. Now let's move on to create our PCA biplot. This first line of code, par, allows us to arrange multiple plots on the screen as a matrix if you'd like. Since I am only interested in displaying my PCI biplot, the matrix coordinates would be 1, 1. To create the plot itself, I use the biplot function, then the name of the PCI object. Here we use scaling set to 1 because it focuses on the sites or species we are interested in looking at and highlights the similarities or dissimilarities among species. You can use scaling set to 2 if you are more interested in correlations between sites or species. I set type to text to label my site numbers and species names on the biplot. You could also set this to points if you'd rather it appear unlabeled as a point. I also decided to name my x and y axes according to their principal component and in parentheses the percent of variation explained by that axis. Now when we render our biplot, it can look a little bit overwhelming at first, but there is a simple way to identify the major trends in a PCA biplot. The general rule of thumb is that the angles between the vectors tell you the relatedness between two species. So two species vectors less than 90 degrees are positively related, and the smaller the angle, the stronger that relationship is. Vectors at 90 degrees are unrelated from each other, and vectors greater than 90 degrees are negatively related, with that relationship strengthening with increasing angle. We can use this to determine how the presence of different species relate to each other at our sampling sites. For example, we can see that the presence of the American toad, American bullfrog, pickerel frog, and green frog are all positively related. In other spots on this biplot, we can see other species clusters that are positively related to each other. We can also see that the presence of the American toad is unrelated to the presence of the gray tree frog and northern leopard frog, as the angle between these vectors is about 90 degrees. We can also see that the presence of this cluster is negatively related to the species in the opposing quadrant. So, negatively related to the presence of the western chorus frog, spring peeper, and wood frog. The magnitude of the vectors tells us how strongly the species influence the principal component. So the American bullfrog has a very small vector, meaning that although these were the best principal components overall, it has the loosest fit with this species. This is an example of how we can use this data to characterize species and site relationships. In this case, we looked at how the presence of different frog species related to each other and were able to identify clear patterns of what species were positively related and negatively related. To summarize, today we discussed what a principal component analysis is and how the principal component axes are created. We talked through an example using species presence absence data and we created and identified trends from a PCI biplot. Check out my page if you're interested in more video tutorials in R or QGIS. If you have any other questions or suggestions, please put them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching.